Welcome to Metro Focus. In this episode, we're doing all things Metro. We're going to visit Metro's first back-to-business procurement fair at the Washington Convention Center in the nation's capital, then head over to one of our Metro stations and shower our customers with appreciation for their patience through the year-long SafeTrack Rehabilitation Project. Visit Metro's Customer Service Center in Maryland, where we will learn all about the new social media team that was created to address all the customer needs on social media. Next, we'll visit Willie Park Station and see how Metro has partnered with Reading is Fundamental to help end child illiteracy in the DC Metro area. As you can see, Metro is doing so much in the community, and that's not all. We have a lot in store for you for this episode. So sit back, get comfortable, and enjoy this Metro Focus ride. Welcome to the Washington Convention Center here in Washington, D.C. We're going to hang out with Metro for the Back to Business Procurement Fair. Today we're going to learn all about how Metro is getting fiscally responsible, engaging local businesses, and letting the community know exactly how we're going to spend our resources this upcoming year. So the Metro Back to Business Fair is an opportunity to show businesses in the community, both small and large, that there are opportunities with Metro. Metro has more than $500 million in business in any given year. We awarded in 2016 more than 350 contracts. So opportunity truly rides with Metro. So the Office of Sustainability at Metro is primarily focused on resource efficiency, energy efficiency, and you know water efficiency, looking to reduce our operating expenses, looking to reduce our consumption of resources. So at the Back to Business Fair, we're looking to you know get out there and see vendors who have innovative solutions for Metro to focus on you know reducing our energy consumption, reducing our water consumption, and looking at you know new products that are out there can help us to do business in different ways and maybe take us to uh, you know some of the state of the art technology. We're here because one, we get the opportunity to meet different businesses in the area. In and of course, we do partnerships with a lot of businesses um, to help promote Metro in different ways. So it was uh, important for us to be here for that, as well as we have a Smart Benefits Seminar that we're holding here today so that we can tell businesses how they can save money on their commute and help their employees save money on their commutes to and from work. Internal compliance is the long arm internal audit function for the general manager. Uh, one of Paul's goals, in addition to ensuring that we are efficient and effective with our services with rail and bus was to ensure that our business practices and financial management controls were in place and operating effectively as well. We really want to touch base with the community, get um, a feel of you know the people who are doing business with Metro, get a sense of some of the services that these uh, businesses provide, uh, to have a better idea of how Metro is integrating our business with the community and giving back to the community. When you have an organization like Metro that covers three different jurisdictions, I mean, we're in DC, Maryland, and Virginia, it means that there's a lot of folks that need an opportunity to show and demonstrate all their goods and services. So this was an opportunity for folks who are primes, who are large contractors, construction, IT, to also meet with small businesses that provide materials and services. So it was a partnering event, but it was also an opportunity for Metro to find out about all the diverse opportunities that are out there. JMT is headquartered in the metropolitan area through here. We have 35 offices. We get involved in everything from planning, real estate, design work, all the way through technology integration for public works agencies such as WMATA as part of this. So we provide all the services from the very beginning to the very end of the construction and how things are implemented as part of this. Tell me a little bit more about your specific relationship with Metro though. Um, what we're here really talking about is how to plan for the future, how we can provide that system for future generations working forward with station planning, access, how the communities can work in with the development as part of the Metro system. Since uh, WMATA uh, moves more people than uh, most other transit systems uh, in this general area. We feel as though the elevator and escalator system here is a vital link to keep these people moving and get these people where they need to go on a day-to-day -day basis. We were given an opportunity uh, and an invitation to come back and share our experiences with some of the other potential DBE people, companies that are interested in becoming certified. At the same time, some of the other DBEs are already certified. to give them the, the opportunity to see how what we were giving these opportunities here enriched us and encouraged us and, and like I said, uh, had a major part of our growth of our company. Back to business with Metro really means that there are opportunities to do anything with regard to goods and services. So we invite people to come out and to continue to check our website for business opportunities with Metro.
tell me what Safe Track has meant for you this past year. A little inconvenience, but this is what we do. This is what y'all had to do, or whatever. So we made it work. Overall, it wasn't the worst. It was much better than a lot of people let it thought it would turn out to be. Yeah. So. How do you feel about it being over now? I'm glad it's over. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's definitely much better than it was before. I'm glad you know the old rail cars are gone and liability's going up and everything. So. What do you think about just now getting a McDonald's gift card from the GM himself at the escalator? It's it's a very nice gesture. I I I, I think it's a really nice thing to have all the employees come out and express their gratitude personally. What line do you travel on? I'm on the green and the yellow and the blue. So, the, all so the, you were definitely impacted by Safe Track this year. What did it mean for you? Well, sometimes there was a lot of bit of delays, so we had to kind of be more mindful about you know timing of when I have to leave. Anything for safety first. Absolutely. And happy that there's been a, a lot of improvement. The uh, escalators are great, and you know the overall service has improved greatly. So I, I couldn't complain. Not everybody knows these facts, but we had 500 people working every day in the surge, in or around the surge. So boots on the ground was one to 200 people in the surge area and another one to 200 people outside, bus drivers, police officers, uh, customer service reps. So we had 500 people, 386 days, over 93 miles, and 16 surges for one goal, safer tracks. It was a tremendous amount of work. Um, I'm a former assistant superintendent out of West Falls Church, and there was a lot of safe track projects being done out there. But I must commend Wamada on the great job and our customers on the patience that they endured with us. I think everything went well. I wanted our customers to know that we definitely appreciate them. This is the minimum that we could do. Just to come out and say thank you, we appreciate you for continuing to ride our system. We, we want the rail to be safe, we want the company to be safe, we want the system to be safe. I'm glad that it's over, but if we had to do it again, I would rather do it instead of something tragic happening. Every single department across the agency helped to make Safe Track possible. I want to say thank you to the people in marketing who made these items possible. Um, so thank you very much to their support for this, for employees, and for all of the events throughout the last year. This is a loaf. Loafs run on the metro escalator. This is a lurk. Lurks stand to the right and hold on to the handrail. Don't be a loaf. Be a lurk. We are here at Prince George's Plaza at the Office of Customer Service. I'm standing with Ms. Barbara Moulton. She's the Senior Director of Customer Relations here at Metro. So Barbara, tell us a little bit about the Office of Customer Service. We get a lot of calls. We get a lot of tweets. We'll trip plan for you, general information. It's exciting. It's nonstop. It's constant. And we're just so happy to be able to provide the nation's capital, that kind of service. How nice is that to get a tweet from a customer? It's exciting, it really is, because the, the instantaneous nature of this is absolutely exciting. Uh, I can remember a time I can take you back to old school customer service where there were hard copy letters actually that we used to answer. And so it would take 10 to 15 days. Now these people, customers want to know information like that and we're there to receive it. And we get it back like that, which is nice. Tell us a little about the social team. How many people is it? I know you're getting thousands of tweets. How many people are actually responding to that every day? We have three representatives now, and we're growing the team to five. So Barbara, you mentioned to me that we do chat here at Metro. Yes, we started chat June 26th. 
during 10 to 2 a.m., 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. every day. We have three, we're growing the staff to five individuals who not only will do chat, if that's where, how you want to connect with us to get information, they also do Twitter and they'll also pick up the phone. They can toggle from a 140 characters to a full-blown, you know, uh, phone call with full complete sentences. <laughs> So on a typical day, um, I come in at 10.30 and the first thing I do is I make myself available to accept live chats. I am responsible for covering the evening rush, so that's from 3 to 7 p.m. So I'll be responsible for responding to any tweets that come through uh, any of our channels. One of the most memorable experiences I've had um, while engaging with customers on Twitter would probably have to be one incident where somebody reached out to us about a lost item. I think it was a lost phone actually. Um, and they ended up coming into the lobby, uh, and this is after I interacted with them on Twitter, and I actually ended up meeting them in person and letting them know that I was the one that they were interacting with on Twitter. So that was kind of a cool moment to see um, it all come you know, full circle and kind of see what my interaction led to. My favorite part about the job, believe it or not, is probably the um, lack of predictability because any given day, uh, something can happen in the system and we're probably the first people to see it because we're looking at Twitter, um, we're engaging with folks you know, real time. No day is the same, um, really depends on um, if there's any kind of service disruptions or some kind of uh, event that happened over the weekend. Um, so specifically, um, there was uh, the Women's March not too long ago, and there were a ton of people that, that came from all over the country. And one of the most memorable interactions I've had with the customer was probably one that came from the Women's March. She was just so impressed with how the system was, how station managers handled the situation, how clean the trains were. And it was just really, it was rewarding to, to be able to interact with her. It was really cool to see all the recognition that we got. So that was definitely, and that, that lasted throughout the whole week. It was, you know, people just saying, you know, thank you so much for all your help over the weekend. Um, but every day is a little bit different. Um, so it's definitely exciting. So the new social team, how accessible are they? What are their hours of service? The social team is available from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And they actually do live chats from 10 to 2 every day. Very nice. So what's in the future for social engagement here at Metro? Well, right now, we'd love, love the customer base to grow. We're doing about 100 chats a week. Now, we compared ourselves to SEPTA. SEPTA in Philadelphia actually does about 1,000 a month. So that just lets you know, and they've been in operation for seven years with chat. So for us, we're only a couple of weeks new, we're excited, and I'd love to see that customer base grow using that as, a, as an option for them. Well, thank you so much, Barbara, for having Metro Focus. As usual, it sounds like Metro is delivering awesome customer service. Oh, you're welcome, and please chat with us. Absolutely, with us. and Twitter and Facebook. Indeed. At Metro, we are now putting every station through a deep cleaning four times more frequently. Why? Because a cleaner station is not only a nicer station, it's a safer station. So we're at the Woodley Park Metro Station handing out free books and literacy resources to kids all over the DC area today. Reading is Fundamental has partnered with Metro this summer to bring read and write events to local communities all over the Washington DC area to get more books and literacy content to kids who need them most. We're giving out um, 500 books to people coming through the Woodley Park Metro Station on their way to the zoo or wherever they're going. Reading is Fundamental has been a voice for children's literacy for over 50 years. And with a grassroots network of over 1 million volunteers from communities and schools around the country, we're giving out free books and literacy resources to over 40 million kids throughout our history. We're really excited about partnering with Metro. You know, whether or not Metro has intended to, they've created a, a community of readers. And people, when, whether, whether they're commuting on their way to work or to school or to adventures in and around the city, they're reading. I'm personally passionate about reading and, and professionally, I have the best job. I get to ensure that kids have the fundamental building blocks they need to succeed um, by giving them free books and corresponding literacy resources every day. Um, you know, when I meet a family who doesn't have any books in the home um, and they thank me for profusely for giving them one book. I wish there was more that I could do. Um, oftentimes when I'm at a school giving out free books to kids, 
they look at me and say, when do I have to bring the book back? And I say, you don't have to bring it back. You get to keep that book. And that's what we get to do every day, is that we get to um, bring books and the enjoyment of reading um, to kids every day who otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't have the, those resources. Um, there's a literacy crisis in America today, and it compounds with age. 34% of kids entering kindergarten lack the basic um, language skills needed to learn how to read. 65% of our fourth graders aren't reading on grade level, and only 37% of our students graduating high school can read at or above um, uh, reading level. So it's really important to start early. As you see behind me, um, kids are getting books. The earlier they read, um, the, the better off they're going to be. And um, we're really excited to be here today to make sure that we can get free books to kids who need them most. We um, just ran into a woman who came to this event not to go to the zoo, not to get somewhere else on the metro, but she came specifically um, to get a book for her child because she understands how important reading is. She actually called me on the phone. She saw one of our Read and Ride event ads on the, on the bus. She was riding the G8. And she called me and said, listen, I need more information on this. I would love to get my son some free books. Where do I go? When, when should I be there? And I told her we were having this Read and Ride event at the Woodley Park Metro Station. And, and she showed up right on time, 9 30 on the dot and she was ready to get some free books for her kids and she's a teacher actually so really understands the importance of reading and it was so great to meet her in person and, and be able to give her um, a couple free books. We specifically came for this event. I know it's a beautiful day. We wanted to uh, come up and get the books because of course it's summer sometimes we lose information in the summer and we want to make sure that we get as many books as possible so we came to the event today specifically for this. Say something you remember from one of your favorite books. Mm. <laughs> it's so important to read. I mean, when we, when we read, we open the doors to the world. So it's important for all of us to read and read to our children. It's, I just can't stress the importance of it. Thank you for having this event. If you give people an opportunity to read, they're going to jump on it. You know, it's not um, lack of, of passion or lack of um, enjoyment of reading, it's lack of opportunity and access. And that's really what Reading is Fundamental is all about and why we partnered with Metro. You know, Metro literally takes people places to work, to school, um, to adventures in and, in and out of the city. And we feel like reading does the same thing. Reading takes you places. It allows you to unlock your potential and explore worlds beyond your own. And um, that's what we're doing here today is we're giving that opportunity to kids all over the D.C. metro area. You can head to www.rift.org slash read and ride. And if you want more information about the work that Reading is Fundamental does here in the Washington, D.C. area or nationwide, you can head to rift.org. This is a loop. <laughs> Loops don't hold on when they ride the bus or train. <laughs> this is alert. Alerts always hold the handrails or safety straps. Don't be a loaf. Be alert. This morning we celebrate the opening of the Metro Rail Training Simulator, really the first at the jurisdiction level within the Washington region. This will be a tool that will help provide cost-effective and life-saving training opportunities for our public safety professionals. This is all about safety first, and I think it uh, reflects very well that Loudoun County stepped to the plate uh, years ahead of the service coming online and asking you know, for the ability uh, to have the cars, which we were glad to do, and for them to put up the dollars to, to have this set up. And it, it is all about training, 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 and we hope that we never use it, but we want to be prepared. Metro is a very unique entity. We bring so much to the region. Uh, we have our own police department, which we're very proud of, but we don't have our own fire department. So we rely so much on the first responders to handle those medical emergencies and those fires and smokings. And so this is just really extending our partnership and building our relationship in the national capital region. Um, although the Silver Line is not out here yet, we've already trained hundreds of Loudoun County first responders, and that partnership's only going to grow. We're, we are having fire and rescue from all over the Metro Corridor, not just from Loudoun, but from all over the Metro Corridor come here to be trained on efficient and effective rescue techniques on, on the Metro if something is to happen. And of course, we all hope the training's not ever needed. 
So we'll have people from all over the Metro Corridor coming down here to train. So I really want to, com uh, to commend the partnership between Metro and between Loudoun County, but I especially want to commend our first responders who are always on the front line of taking care of everyday citizens every single day. Today our staff from Rescue 20, six, Truck 620 and Engine 620, as well as Medic 613, located all here in Leesburg, will be performing a simulated trash fire on the right railway that will require extinguishment by public safety personnel. Now you might think that's kind of odd, a trash fire on the railway, but it does happen. The primary responsibility of the first new engine company, which is Engine 620, they're going to gather as much information as possible to include the exact location and nature of the incident status of the third rail power, and the status of the train in or around the approaching incident scene. Track bed safety is very paramount to us. 750 volts uh, will not ask questions and kill anybody in contact with that. So th track bed safety includes uh, third rail safety. Permission has to be granted by the incident commander to enter the track. We must be in contact with the Metro Rail Operation Control Center to ensure that all power has been removed and that third rail has been tested by fire department personnel using a bolt probe or hot stick. Uh, I did want to make a little bit about the wasads. Um, I called it the warning strobe and alarm device. And they're yellow boxes that are placed on either end of the incident um, that are placed and would warn us if power was to be restored. So we confirmed that power was down, we confirmed it with a hot stick, we put those devices on the rail, and if power was restored, you hear an audible and visual sign. Once permission has been granted by the incident commander, the recon group shall proceed to the reported incident location and report their findings. So now that we have the wasads in place, we have verified the power is off with the bolt probe and ensured that there's no trains in the area, our folks can move in and complete the extinguishment process. Many resources must be effectively and efficiently managed during any emergency in the Metro Rail system. A major incident may involve many agencies from local, state, and federal governments, um, as well as all of our stakeholders and partners. Uh, the incident management system is what we use to um, keep us safe and answer this challenge. Uh, I want to thank you. The effort that each of you made in getting these initial rail cars to Loudoun County will certainly pay dividends for the safety of our fire and rescue personnel, as well as everyone that rides the Metro in Loudoun County for years to come. Uh, to each of you, a sincere thank you, and thank you for a job well done. Instead of access to yet another technology platform, wouldn't you rather have access to technology on the platform? We thought so. This summer, MetroRail's new hours of service are going to take effect, but for people who travel late at night on weekends or early in the mornings on Sunday, or at other times affected by the MetroRail hours changes, MetroBus is offering later and earlier service to help people get around. Uh, some of the bigger changes as part of that effort include extending bus service from Virginia to the District of Columbia across the 14th Street Bridge. That'll be Route 16E, which will connect Franklin Square downtown with the Pentagon and Columbia Pike Corridor. And in Virginia, from the Pentagon, uh, customers can transfer to other services that are already operating to continue their trips. Um, in Maryland, we're extending service up the Rockville Pike Corridor. And in D.C., what we're doing is adding a lot of late night and early trips, making some of our busiest routes near 24-hour services. When we put together the rail span bus service plan, we looked at segments of the metro rail system that had the highest ridership at the times that were affected by the proposals. And what we found and what we did is we added trips to routes or extended routes to provide those connections to match the highest corridor rail ridership lines. That includes the orange line between Ballston and downtown, the yellow line between um, Pentagon and downtown, and service to the east along um, the blue, orange, and silver lines, and then on the red line. 
So from the Ballston Station, Route 38B parallels the orange and silver lines on the western end of downtown and serves into the Farragut Square area. So riders coming from downtown and needing to travel along that portion of the rail system could instead use Metrobus Route 38B. The 16E extension mimics the connection between the Pentagon and downtown DC. Additional trips on a host of key routes, including the 30s and the X2, provides connections to the south and eastern parts of the district, and then the L2 up Connecticut Avenue and Wisconsin Avenue, mimicking the red line, and then additional trips on the 64, 70, the 80, and so on and so forth for the eastern end of the Red Line connections. Customers can transfer to other regional bus service and other metro bus service to get around really a lot of places, including a lot of late night activity centers, Ballston, Bethesda, Silver Spring, Wheaton, College Park. Um, some of the larger changes in Maryland include transitioning service to instead provide transfers at the Southern Avenue Metro Station, and that includes the Oxon Hill services, the P-17 and P-19, and the Fort Washington Forest services, the W-13 and W-14. So those services will now feed into the Green Line at Southern Avenue Station. In addition, we're adding some additional trips in Virginia on Route 18P between Burke Center and the Pentagon. We do service changes four times a year, and generally in um, June and December are our bigger service changes. Our customers tell us um, what they feel is missing, we monitor ridership continuously, we monitor on-time performance continuously, and um, coordination with our local jurisdiction and funding partners. And working with all those inputs, we put together service plans. On the 16th Street corridor in the District of Columbia, we worked in partnership with the DDOT, and what we found is that um, we're going, we needed to add trips to have, help people travel along the corridor faster. We're adding trips on Metro Extra Route S9, which operates limited stop service between the Silver Spring Metro Rail Station and downtown DC by way of 16th Street. Service will change on the local S2 and S4 routes, but service will be added on the S9 limited stop, including new Saturday service. So the easiest thing people can do is go online to Metro's online trip planner at wamata.com, and there's an option in there where you can select bus only, or if you're traveling at a time that's affected by the rail span change, the trip planner will already recognize that rail is not operating. But the trip planner will provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how do you ride Metro bus as part of your journey. Welcome back, hope you enjoyed the ride. I know you don't want this ride to end, but don't worry, we'll be back next month discussing all the ins and outs of Metro. So till we meet again, take care.